friends, Cloudbart here. Time for another one minute identity and access management lesson. In previous videos, you've heard me talking about creating dynamic security policies by using conditions in our statements to evaluate something about the request that's come in and then determine whether or not to allow or deny uh, that action based on what we find there. Today, we're talking about one of my favorite properties and that is the source IP address, which the request originates from. Remember friends, when you're using the management console, the command line or a system developers kit, you're calling on an AWS API over the network and that request originates from some IP address, which is included in the request context itself. In fact, a great way to kind of see this as an, uh, in action is to head over to CloudTrail and take a look uh, in your event history, find a, a login event of some sort. Uh, you can go to event history, username, find a, an admin, like in my case, I'll do CBT admin. Great, here's a console login event from earlier this month. And right up here at the top, you can see they provide the source IP address. And indeed, if you scroll further on down in, uh, into the actual request context itself, you can see how that information was presented to IAM in the original request. Now this is powerful information that we can filter off of uh, in our security policy statements. So if I grab that IP address here, okay, and then head over to a security policy that I'm writing, Okay, what I can do is deny requests, define specific actions or resources. In this case, I'm denying everything. Okay? And then I'm saying if the uh, request does not originate from this specific IP address, so I'm using the not IP address qualifier here, and then provide that IP address. Now, in this case, I'm talking about a single specific IP. So I wanna throw that slash 32 on the end. Remember, this is classless interdomain routing syntax. You could also define groups of IP addresses or network ranges, again, using that same syntax, even groups of them in the same condition logic. So in the end, friends, what this allows us to do then is define known good origination sources and then deny actions if they don't come from there. Rules tell us in security that a lot of it's about knowing the good traffic. And this is a great example of ensuring that you're providing the right sort of context around who should be allowed to make requests and where those requests should originate from. Hopefully this will help you write a little secure policies out there, dynamic, powerful, and of course, something that can be used across the entire suite of AWS IAM policy setups. See you next time.